Okay, this is a Rolleiflex 2.8, I'm sorry, a uh, 3.5 C. Some readings of the uh, serial number make it into an E, but I think it's a C. The uh, Rolleiflex, again, really well-built cameras. It's a great 120 camera. This one comes with the mirrored lens caps. If you don't have that and you want to buy one used on the... Uh, on the eBay, you're going to end up paying $40 for that. So whenever you can find accessories with your Rolleiflex, that's a great place to save some money. This one came with the uh, strap that has those little clips. So I can use the actual connectors that the Rolleiflex was made for. And on the strap, it has a lens hood. So when you want to use a lens hood, you have it with you but you can store it in your case with the lens cap on. And I like the lens hood. Lens hoods are good. Lens hoods block extraneous light and create a more contrasty image. This one has the Zenitar 3.5. This one, somebody in Boulder was uh, selling some gear and said, you know, I have this old camera and if you're interested, it may need some help with the slow shutter speeds, and it does. The slow shutter speeds are a little bit off, but again, I don't shoot a whole lot of photos with a quarter of a second. It also has an issue with the pop-up thing. This one, this thing comes back further than it should sometimes. If you can see that. That's not supposed to come out to here. It doesn't sit on that pin right, and it doesn't stop. And sometimes when you go to close it, you kind of have to like work it a little bit and jiggle it. Well, again, I'm not going to spend too much money fixing something that takes me a second to jiggle. I'm just going to use it until I can't stand it anymore, I guess. And that's what I've been doing with this. This camera has a really sharp Zenitar lens. The lens is in great condition. There's no marks on it. I've been really lucky finding used Rolleiflexes that have clean lenses. And, you know, no matter what, again, I'm not going to get them overhauled to the point of if they have a, a mark, I'm going to deal with a little bit lack of contrast, if that's the result. The uh, Rolleiflex are really well built. I see there's this, these two little pins here. I wonder if this had one of those little, I sometimes see like a white plate right there. I wonder if that had one of those. This one, the focus is nice and smooth. And I mention that because later I'll have one to show you where the focus doesn't sound so smooth. But it's still working. So... It's not too bad, too big of an issue. This has shutter speeds here. This one's a little bit stiffer. Like I'm really turning these to make them turn. But they do turn. Fifteenth of a second should sound different than a 200, right? There's that little symbol down there of press through or lock. It's on the open position. So that's what a fifteenth of a second sounds like on this camera. Again, you wind it. You open it up, you wind it to the same position, and then you wind it back to the same position to reset the shutter and advance the film. Here's a uh, half a second. That sounded a little bit long, it sounded more like a second. Again, does it matter? How, how often do I shoot at a half a second? That doesn't ma matter to me all that much. This one, I can put up to a five hundredth of a second. But I can't, I can take it off, huh? Here's a 250. Here's a 250 again. Because I want to try it before you move it to the 500. Sometimes on some of these, the C's, the 2.8 C I have, you can't turn it to about 500 of a second unless you haven't wound it. Once you've wound it, you can't change it. The 500 is on a separate spring than the 250. So if you have wound it, you're limited to only going to a 250. And if you want to use a 500, you have to fire a frame or basically fool the camera with a sequence of buttons that it has on it so you can shoot and not advance the film if you cover the lens. But this one, I think this must be the C, because this one I'm able to put into a 500 while it's wound. Yeah, certainly the C, it won't even go to that position. Um, 
Okay, when you get one of these, check it out. I have one that I know that the, this lever down here is a little bit squirrely. It won't sometimes release, and then I can press the shutter, but this one seems to work. It's a nice sounding spring leaf shutter. You might be able to see it if I put it down to a slow shutter speed. Here's a quarter. Again, check the insides. This one doesn't have the uh, releases on here, so you know it's not an F. The Fs have those releases, so you can change the finder with just a uh, pull of that. But this is in really clean condition. Look at the beautiful leather. It's not coming apart. Hopefully no film in it. That's good when we open them. <laughs> and uh, again, it's really clean inside. There's a trick for loading these. When you load the film, you're loading from here, up through here, and over to here. The way to do it is, you have to put your film on this piece, pull this out, put that piece up here, and then your film goes underneath this roller, and after it goes under that first roller, this is the one that feels the, the thickness of the paper backing and lets the camera know when it hits the film so it knows how to automatically load. So what you do is you put your film in here and you roll it underneath the first roller and then over top of these two rollers. And then hook it onto the take up spool which you've just moved. And when you go to wind it, you don't have to check for a number in the viewfinder. You just wind it and you just keep winding it and eventually it'll just stop and it's automatically set for number one. So that's the beauty of the Rolleiflex load, it's loading film system because they had automatic loading and uh, automatic placement for how far to load, how far to roll it before it was in place to get the maximum number of pictures on a roll of film, which is 12 in this situation for, with a 120 camera. So that's my quick look over on the uh, 3.5 We'll say E because it doesn't have the uh, five hundredths of a second issue that the C has. And it's a great camera, Zenitar lens, local buyer sold it inexpensively, I think maybe two, two fifty, only because it had the uh, slow shutters and this little hassle with the uh, finder. But it's not a big deal and it's completely usable as is. I'm a big fan of put more money into film and repair as much as you need to, but don't over repair things. So anyway, I hope that was informative for you. I will have more cameras to show you coming up. So keep watching. Thanks again for being here and uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll bring you some more. Happy shooting.